They'll have the ATF with them or whatever in a lot of cases. I've seen this literally thousands of times in the news when people sue over it. They should. And then they go, hey, you're just going to have to, you know, spend two years in court to get your guns back. And then you win the court case and you don't get the guns back. The police just go sue us again. A lot of times it's because the cops have sold the guns out the back door. That keeps coming out. They're selling your guns, just like a lot of police departments are in the drug trade. And I'll say this, they're mainly Democratic Party run police departments. Republican Party police departments will get crazy and plant drugs on minorities. Sometimes there is a little bit of racism there. Uh, they'll, uh, they'll usually just be holier than thou, though, and you know, beat you up if you back talk them. That, I mean, I'm kind of just, just first approximation from years of research. Well, it's not a first approximation, it's, it's a deep research. What I'm saying is it's just stalled, kind of a MO profile. Democrat police departments generally run the prostitutes, the drugs, the money laundering, the gangs, everything. They sell the guns out the back door, you name it. It's like Chicago. It's a Chicago model. And I, quite frankly, have had enough of it. Now, see, that's how my brain works and meanders, and sometimes I just go with it. I don't know how I even got onto that subject, but um, I should probably give you the top story, shouldn't I? Now, there's a headline right there they pulled up. Washington police sheriff's departments in business of selling guns. Seattle's police department made headlines last month when it held a gun buyback event where citizens surrendered more than 700 firearms in exchange for Amazon gift cards. Their policies destroy the guns, gun wanted weapons from the hands of the private citizens so they otherwise may be not stolen or lost using a crime or actually discharged. But not all police agencies destroy guns seized by police or turned in. No, they end up selling them, either legally or illegally. <laughs> Man, I tell you, a lot of folks go to these gun buybacks and they stand out on the street and the cops don't like it, but... And Austin folks do this, and it happens all over the country. People say, hey, you going in there? I want to buy that gun. And it's a private sale. That's what they want to make you legal. And the old lady will go, well, how much will you give me? I'll give you more than a $50 Amazon card. And you can talk to these old ladies. That's mainly who will have the really nice guns. You'll have, like, gangbangers and folks that have some broken 22 that's 30 years old. And, you know, I guess 50 bucks for a gift card's worth it or whatever. But you better know you're really going in a database. I mean, it's, it's not an anonymous turn-in. That, that's a big fraud. That's come out as well. The old ladies will have sometimes $5,000, $10,000 carved shotgun collectors, and they're there for $100, $200, $50, $50, Walmart gift card, whatever the case is. And, I mean, it's good business to go to a police buyback and, and, and stand out on the public street and wave at people say, I want to buy your guns. And then the cops get in your face say, fine, old lady, you know, Mrs. Mrs. Thompson or whatever their name is, come with me to Bob's gun shop and we'll do a transfer right there. I'll pay you $500 right now for that shotgun. And you can turn around, folks, and make four or $5,000 just like that. I mean, I don't blame the police. I'm not saying they should commit a crime and sell it out the back, but are you really going to take a $5,000 shotgun and melt it down because some idiot saw a TV ad that the government put on locally to come turn in a $5,000, $10,000 shotgun, a $1,500 assault rifle. I mean, they're not destroying a $1,500 assault rifle, boys and girls. They are illegally selling them out the back door. Or if it's a Republican Party type run police department, they will just take them and then sell them to brokers. That's what the article says. And I don't blame them. I mean, that'd be like taking a perfectly good dinner table and just smashing it up or a perfectly good television or a perfectly good tool set. I mean, it's just mental illness. The guns aren't bad. And I know you know that, but it, it just shows the insanity. And I'm going to make myself get to the news. What happens is I researched last night. I researched this morning. I get ready for the show. And then I don't like to expose the system. I mean, I, I want to expose them. I like to expose them. What I mean is it's just sick. But it's got to be done to cover all this. This is so incredible. And I've got to get my writers on this or shoot a special video to kind of codify it and put all the proof in it. But I told you this was coming, and I've been telling you for a couple of years. This Al-Qaeda group is set to take Baghdad now, and there may have to be a total reinvasion of Iraq. 
was armed and protected by Obama and the globalist. I mean, it's just off the charts, another false flag. From hackers and I every day, it's because in, in 19 years on air, and, and the staff's noting this as well in me, I, I, I just am shell-shocked. I'm like a deer in the headlights right now that, wow, I really was on target all along. And the old timers, mainly former military police and intelligence people in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s that warned us about the New World Order. Uh, Kaufman from England, who was in MI6. Anthony Sutton that was worked in investigations in Congress. The John Birch Society, all of them. Uh, it was all exactly as they said. Just exactly as they said. G. Edward Griffin, all of them. I mean, we just uh, read Beckman. I mean, I don't want to hang out with rock stars, folks. I've got some rock star friends and people like them because they're cool, but you know what I mean. I don't want to hang out with movie stars. Or if I do know some movie stars, it's because they're cool people. I like them as friends who I get butterflies around is living legends who are just so smart and patriotic and manly and who came from behind a trillion miles so that we have a chance to beat them today. Ron Paul stands on the shoulders of all those people. I stand on their shoulders. Um, that's why I don't like people, I've analyzed it. I don't like people calling it, tell me what a great job I'm doing because it is embarrassing to me and incredibly humbling that so many incredible people look up to me and half the time I'm all wound up and the show's unlistenable. Because th there are people that were imprisoned and tortured. Congressman Hansen, and we should get that author on who's working with him. I wanted to get Congressman Hansen on and found out he's ill. And nobody probably knows who Congressman Hansen is. He's a Ron Paul from 25, 30 years ago. Just as good as Ron Paul. Just as good as Larry McDonald, Dr. Larry McDonald. Again, another doctor fighting the tyrants. And... They tortured him for six months in a, they call it dieseling, off and on driving him around, sometimes weeks on end, 15, 18 hours a day from federal prison to federal prison until his feet burst and his disc burst. Because that's what happens in that position. They do it. It's worse than being tortured uh, the way the military would torture you. All because he almost got the IRS abolished and started the anti-IRS movement or helped supercharge it. And no one even knows who he is, ladies and gentlemen. But like a rock in water, the ripples. I mean, I haven't been tortured yet. I've been beat up, attacked, harassed. But I mean, I have not paid my dues like a lot of these people like Red Beckman, who they arrested repeatedly, Air Force veteran, bulldozed his house, tortured him in jail, all sorts of stuff he doesn't even talk about just because he started the Fully Informed Jury Association. They told him, you shut up, we're going to kill you. He's still alive. We ought to get him on. I said I was going to have Biggs on, and, and McAdoo's coming in with some positive breaking news. And we've got what happened to Biggs last night going down to the military base, looking for Bergdahl, who's supposedly going to show up. Hasn't gotten there yet. But at the same time, I'm totally shell-shocked because... Now the globalists are admitting what they're going to do, everything the old timers who were on the inside and saw it and warned us said they were going to do. And it is, can only be described as pure Satanism. I mean, shutting the country down, bankrupting the nation, turning our power off, our physical half our electricity, doubling the price will bankrupt us. Obamacare is meant to bankrupt us. I see comments on YouTube at InfoWars. It's a minority of comments going, hey, stop calling them aliens. They're people and they deserve to be here. Can I come to your house and knock on the door and say, let me in and feed me, pay for everything? That's called slavery. I'm not a slave of people coming here, but I am a slave. And then people just have one lines like, oh, come on, be nice. Tell all the poor kids in the world they can get here, they can stay here. I mean, we're not even supposed to call people that are here illegally illegals or 
illegal. We're supposed to call them migrants. It's mind control. We got big news. I haven't even gotten into Iraq. We'll get into that with Biggs and then McAdoo. And it's just, just so much. We're on the march. The empire's on the run.